Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. And we are here we... with the Monday Deck Tep Deck Tech. Off to a great start. Start it over. No, with the Deck Tech <laughs> episode, <laughs> we got some vintage decks for you today. We are very excited about these. Or at right, least I indeed. am. I don't um, know about you. Yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah. Um, sure. Let's before we get into all that, we got our car of the day and our crack back coming up, as well as our main content. But before that, Will... Yes, what you yes, got to yes, say? Yes, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about Patreon. <laughs> Patreon's cool. We all know this. And we have some cool goals on there. Some pledge goals. And we would love to interact with you. Yep. Right? So, uh, that being said, please, I'm not pressuring you into donating. This is this is all consensual. <laughs> right? If you want to send us some money to make a better podcast, I mean that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> right kev i don't want to condone what you said but um it's too late <laughs> it's happened yeah guys we really appreciate any support you guys give whether it's just through, through views whether it's few through golly i can't talk today through commenting <laughs> uh leaving just, likes whatever I feedback is always welcome you did <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, if you feel the notion to donate, we would greatly appreciate it. Yeah. We've got a few pledge tiers that you can choose from. I believe there are four. Mm -hmm. There's a one, a three, a five, and a ten dollar uh, tier. So you can choose the one that best fits your budget. You can mm -hmm. also set a cap that you don't go over, uh, just to keep you within your personal budget. Uh, right. We do appreciate any of the uh, of the donations that you guys can send. Again, if you if you can't, if you don't have it in the budget. Or if you just don't feel like you need to, that's totally fine. We're going to continue doing this no mm -hmm. matter what. Uh, we just enjoy doing it. So. That being said, there mm -hmm. will be, once we get some patrons, some Patreon-specific content. There will be. Um, which will be pretty cool. We've talked with our sponsor, uh, yes, who yes. would like to open some boxes and potentially give some uh, free cards out to our Patreons oh. uh, over on, on that account. So oh, Very cool. Uh, if anybody does sign up, uh, if we get a few people, maybe we'll start doing some giveaways there uh, solely for the Patreons. Or the Patreon. The patrons? Me. Patrons, yes. Patron Saints of It Resolves? <laughs> the Patron Saints of It Resolves. <laughs> That's what you'll be labeled. <laughs> a Patron Saint. A Patron Saint. Oh, uh, why not? We also have a Twitch that is going to be up and running. Uh, probably is breaking the fourth wall. Um, <laughs> Pre-recording a little bit. Um, <laughs> schedules. Schedules are a little crazy. Uh, we're pre-recording a few episodes. So by this time... Hopefully, uh, we'll have the we'll have Twitch our, our streaming kinks worked out yeah. and whatnot. Yes. We'll have that worked out for you guys to enjoy. All yeah. of that content will be posted over on YouTube. Yes. Uh, so you can see it in both places. As well as recorded on Twitch, I believe. We should yes. have it uh, saved there if you can't um, meet the actual stream. Then you Absolutely. Can at least go and watch it. Absolutely. So we encourage you guys to go check it out. Mm -hmm. Hang out with mm -hmm. our buddy Parks, who is the uh, sort of the stream guy at this point um and yeah. yeah just hang out with us we'll probably be on there as well so yeah. hang out come talk to us neat um neat kev neat what a neat intro <laughs> are you making fun of my word no it was neat <laughs> um <laughs> all right guys moving into uh -huh. our main segments the card of the day a great way to start off each episode we got a new one coming at you in three two one moth rider samurai first of all that's amazing i don't care what the rest of the card says i like it it it's it's a uh, samurai riding a moth that's amazing okay it's three and a white for a two two human samurai riding a moth it's got flying because it's on a moth and bushudo one it's uh, on a bug right uh, Bushido meaning when it blocks <sighs> or becomes blocked, it gets plus one plus one until end of turn. This is from the Champions of Kamigawa, Kamigawa block. Oh, uh, it's yep. a common from that set. It seems just like a solid common to me. I, in a limited yeah. environment, it's probably not too bad. Uh, well, something about me, I don't like creepy crawlies. Um, moths, really? are, moths are okay, but bugs in general are <laughs> blech. Um, but the card, right, the card. Um... <laughs> No, I think Kevin's <laughs> right. This is a fine common. Um, it's probably only served in limited. Oh, yeah. Um, it's eh, it's all right. It's not that great. No. The coolest part about it is the fact that it's a moth with a samurai on it. I honestly thought you were going to say Bushido, 
and <laughs> it's kind of speaks to the power of the card <laughs> that you didn't. Yeah, it's just not good. Um, no, no, two two for four only with flying. Um, yeah, I don't know what the like average stats were in the champions block. I don't remember um, either. It this may or may weak. not have been on par for that. Uh, but the Bashudo is okay. It adds a little bit. I mean, I guess. Um, but it's really not that great. It's no. just like a probably just a filler common in a in a limited deck. Yeah, I'm um, not super impressed. It reminds me of a lot of Griffins I've seen. Um, <laughs> it's actually better than a lot of Griffins <laughs> yeah, I've seen. Yeah, I was going to say. I've got some experience with those. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm hoping somewhere along the line, Rosewater just, he hears this. And he just... My, my cry for Griffin Tribal. Maybe Iconic Masters will only be Griffins. And he says, guys... Guys, have you heard of it? Resolves. There's a there's a guy on there. We have to print a bunch of really good griffins. And <laughs> they're gonna be have to be played in every deck. Is that your impression? Of- I've only heard him talk once. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good impression. I've only heard him talk once. I'm sorry, Mark. Maybe listen to him more. Um, oh, I hate you, Kevin. All right, guys. So with the card of the day out of the way, um, we have some vintage deck lists that we'd like to talk about. Uh, again, as we do with every deck tech episode, we go off on our own. We pick a deck that we feel would be fun to talk about. Uh, yes. It doesn't necessarily have to be a popular deck or anything like that. Although in this instance, I don't think either of these is an unheard Mm-mm. of deck. Um, um, mine could- might be a little more janky. Mine's just not quite awesome, but we'll, I mean, sure. well, sorry, we'll talk about it. Um, obviously, these are vintage decks, so there's going to be the normal gambit of, like, Black Lotus and Moxes and things like that in most of these decks. These are very overpowered, um, so you'll probably see in the deck list we'll be talking about those, but we'll maybe gloss over them a little bit just because it's pretty much, it goes without saying that they're going to be in there. Um, so, with that being said... Um, my deck that I decided to pick was the Painter's Servant combo deck. Uh, this is a really cool combo deck, sort of a control combo deck, uh, but it's a very interesting one. I'll get to that in a minute, but first, uh, what deck did you pick? I picked Canadian Threshold. Um, also known as Rug Delver? <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Kevin? Yep. I just, for, you know... For science. Yeah. I just wanted to flip to another deck. Okay. Now, this is totally different. (laughs) Not a different deck. It's Canadian Threshold. Yeah. I don't see no Delver in it, though. Okay. Weird. We'll have to see what this thing does. Uh, I do think I have an idea as to what type of deck this is, though. So I could be able to talk about it. Why don't I go into mine first? Bless you, Give you a minute. Um, (laughs) I did my research. I thought it did. Uh, Okay, so again, I picked the Painter's Servant combo. Uh, Painter's Servant being a two-drop creature, I believe, that basically says every card in the decks, in the hands, everything like that, is a specific color of your choice. Uh, So Mm. you get to pick a color, make everything that color. And the combo is with a card called Grindstone, uh, which basically you tap it, and I believe two lands, and um, or two mana. And you're able to mill the opponent for a few cards. If you hit cards of the same color, then you get to Ah. do it again. So you instant mill them and then just pass turn or just make them draw a card. Um, Seems pretty good. Yeah, so that's really what the the deck is based off of. Other than that, uh, it tends to run basically like any other control deck that you would expect to see. Uh, running things like Force of Will, Mental Misstep, Fluster Storm, all the general counter spells that you would expect to see. Mm-hmm. Of course, all the Moxes and the Black Lotus mm-hmm. and things. Um, it also runs the standard card draw cards, things like Brainstorm, things like Dig Through Time, things like Ancestral Recall. Uh, generally, as far as lands are concerned, it's a very land light deck, as most of these decks tend to be since they are in vintage. Uh, it runs only 13 lands. One of which being Library of Alexandria, which, if you don't know, is basically like the tenth piece of power in Magic. Oh, yes. Um, it's a land that you can tap if you've got seven mm-hmm. lands or seven cards in hand and draw another card, which that's just pure card advantage, right? Like, it's a little insane. Um, on the draw, you're able to basically just draw extra cards immediately. Um, so it tends to be quite good. Uh, this deck. I will say also runs a few tutors uh, in the way of, I believe, Vampiric Tutor or uh, Demonic Tutor. I'm not sure which one it is. 
and then Tezzeret, the seeker, um, which is usually used to find the painter's servant or the grindstone or whatever you need it to find. Makes sense. Uh, it's basically just an artifact <clears throat> tutor. It also animates some things, but it, that's not really the point. Um, so what this deck tries to do is as quickly as possible, get out your painter's servant and grindstone away those cards. Generally, it can do this very quickly, basically because you're in vintage and you get all of the, uh, the moxes, the black lotus, things like that. You're able to ramp these things out pretty quickly. I see. Um, so you can get the combo off, I guess, potentially like turn one uh, if you really had a good hand. Wow. Um, I don't know if that's how it usually go down goes down, um, but it generally is pretty quick. So the the key to this deck that I've realized is the uh, the basically playing those combo pieces at the right time uh, in a format like Vintage, playing to what your opponent might have is really important. Uh, Force of Will and all of the controlling cards out there, uh, are. I mean, they're basically in every deck. It's a blue-dominated format, so you see a lot of counters. I see. Um, so you do have to play around those a bit, but you do get some counter spells of your own to fight over, mm -hmm. uh, which mm -hmm. makes it a little bit easier, and you can stick your combo pieces. Um, but aside from that, it's your standard control deck. It just runs as its win con, that combo, uh, again, with Painter, Servant, and Grindstone, and you just mill them out. It's a really wow. cool way to win. It's one of my favorite combos uh, because it's mill. I love mill. Um, you do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it is a really cool way to win. Um, and it's just sort of a, it's just an oddball sort of a strategy. Um, it sees about 1% of the metagame right now. It's not a rampant deck by any means, but it is quite good. So I really like it. I don't think it's like a tier one deck by any means, but it's it's up there. Okay. So, yeah. I like it. That's where I'm at. I like that deck. Fair. <laughs> okay. All right. Tell us about Canadian Threshold or what you think it might be, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so, every list I've seen has been Rug Delver, Canadian Threshold. Yep. Um, which makes a lot of sense. Well, sort of. Um, <laughs> it's just really a good Delver deck. You know, Delta yeah. Instance and Sorceries, find some stuff, yeah. swing with Delver and win. Okay. Uh this one, this list I'm looking at, guys, a Canadian Threshold deck that runs no Delver, <laughs> and the only thing that plays with the graveyard is Tarmogoyf. Okay. Um, however, <laughs> it relates, I'm going to say. <laughs> okay. This is kind of a tricky one. Uh, it's the same colors, obviously. It's Rug. Um, so I'm looking at four Bloodbraid Elves. Good. Four Shardless Agents. Also good. So Wow, very cool. So why I'm thinking these are in here and how it relates kind of to Canadian Threshold. Mm -hmm. uh, if you'll think about a, the standard list, a um, lot of instants. Yeah. Lots of sorceries. Um, it's just a really aggressive, cheap deck. And okay. this deck kind of is the same way. Really, the top of the line you're looking at uh, is Treasure Cruise. Which is not actually... You know, it's normally an eight drop. It's not actually an eight drop. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, uh, time walk is in here. I'm just going through a few of them. Uh, Force of Will, technically, again at the top of the curve there. Uh, Dig through time, I guess, is another one. So there's your delve, I suppose mm -hmm. you could say. Um, but really, I believe it's looking to cascade into a bunch of the stuff. Look for time walk. Take some extra turns. Draw a bunch of cards. Do it over again. Okay. Um, it looks pretty simple and So it's sort of just a value junk deck. Yeah. Almost. It looks like a good stuff junk deck. This That's list cool. in particular. Yeah, yeah. Um, your normal Canadian threshold decks um, will have ways to just turn on Delver. Again, mm -hmm. instance, sorceries. Uh, things like Young Pyromancer. Mm -hmm. um, I saw one with the blue merfolk dude who makes little guys. Uh, Master of Waves. Yeah, but he's honestly just a worse yeah. Pyromancer. Um, so... It seems to me a common theme is playoff instance. Yep. You know, to be mm -hmm. able to turn things on. Um, and that's really what this does. Uh, it's got Black Lotus, Mox Emerald, Mox Jet, yep. all the power stuff. But oh, yeah. interestingly, uh, runs two Dak Faden. That makes sense. You think? Explain um, it to I me. I do. Um, so Dak Faden is very good at stealing artifacts. He He's is. the greatest thief in the multiverse. So um, he's very good against things like mud where they're just playing a bunch of big artifacts. If you get to just steal one and swing the game in your favor, 
Um, Jack Faden's really good at changing the game in that way. He's also, because it's uh, so f- this format, Vintage especially, being full of all the mocks mm. and Black Lotus, mm. you get to steal those as well. Ah, um, good point. And so, you know, as far as Black Lotus goes, it's not as easy to steal because they can just crack it in response. Um, but all the mocks and things like that, you can just take, and then you just have that for the rest of the game. So you're up, and you're putting them down. So it's putting a wider gap between you two. Um, I see. So Dak Faden does not surprise me too much. I think it sees a good bit of play uh, okay. in Vintage. So Okay. So some of the other instants, uh, obviously card draw spells like Ancestral Recall. You've got Brainstorm. Uh, we said Dig Through Time. Mm-hmm. Um, you also have a lot of Burn. Uh, one Fire and Ice, but four Lightning Bolts. That's kind of standard, I guess, for uh, a Vintage deck. Uh, one Ponder. Okay. Uh, these things you're going to get to cast for free. You're going to get to cascade into. Yeah. Um, because most of these again are going to be less than, uh, Blood Braid and Shardless together. Mm-hmm. Um, so that just kind of seems nice. It's probably a very very fast deck. Yeah. That gets out its answers, gets out its plays very quickly. Just a solid value deck. Yeah. Um, it's land base again, pretty standard for yeah. vintage. Nothing crazy. Um, uh, Library of Alexandria makes its way here. Misty Rainforest, two of those. One Polluted Delta. Four Scalding Tarns, one Strip Mine, uh, and then three Tropical Islands, three Volcanic Islands. Okay. So yep. in total, how many? 16 or so mm-hmm. lands? Yep. That seems about average yep. for a for a Vintage okay. deck. Um, yep. Again, Legacy and Vintage running fairly light on lands in comparison yeah. to stuff like Modern or Standard. Um, just because, especially in Vintage, they do have all the mocks and stuff, so they're able to, to ramp in other ways than just lands. Uh, but just in general, the the plays in Legacy and Vintage especially are much more uh, thought out, I would say. Sure. And that they they generally know what they're going to be doing um, pretty early. And a lot of the spells you get to cast are kind of for free uh, in the way of Force of Will and stuff like that. So Yeah. Um, um, again, nothing complicated about this. Yeah. And honestly, that was much like the other lists I looked at, a mm. very simple value aggro list. Okay. Um, this actually took third place in the tournament it played at. Nice. Um, behind Eldrazi Aggro and some kind of Grixis deck. I just see the symbols. He uh, okay, but some kind of <laughs> Grixis deck, we'll say. Um, and it did beat out Mud, so I think you're absolutely right in saying that. Yeah, that's what I think. Dak Faden gives mm-hmm. it the edge over the Mud yeah. decks. Definitely. Um, Definitely. Well, very cool. A good value deck then. Yeah, it's just. Uh, I'll be honest, guys. It kind of disappointed me. Did it? It did. I saw Canadian Threshold, and having never seen it before, I was like, oh, that sounds neat. <laughs> I know there's America, American control stuff. Yeah. I never considered a Canadian thing. I was <laughs> expecting some kind of Boros thing. But, uh... Didn't happen. Nope. <laughs> well, it's the still a cool deck, though. <laughs> <laughs> what a great pun. <laughs> We're full of puns here on it resolves. Um, Very interesting. Yeah, no, I uh-huh. I like that deck list though. It is a no, little yeah, underwhelming, but it is I'm a sure cool deck list. I'm sure it's really fun to play. Yeah. Like Cascade was such a cool mechanic. Oh yeah. Uh, I hope that they bring it back in some respect they and won't. not break it. I mean, they tried with uh, Kaladesh, I believe, or with Aether Revolt, where they do they did the expertise cards, where you played them and then you got to play a card from your hand for free if it fit the the sort of mana cost that it gave you okay that i think was their answer to cascade right that was yeah. fixed cascade for them okay. um which i think isn't terrible but it's just obviously it's not, it's not as it's not cascade right. it's which not going to be as powerful you really want um, is the thing i mean you it, this happens all the time a lot of the older uh sort of set specific uh keyword cards things like cascade or dredge is the perfect example Mm, um they're never gonna do that again (laughs) no dredge Um, makes sense um like they'll reprint cards i mean they just reprinted blood braid elf and eternal masters last year but it's banned Um, well yeah it's banned in modern but it's not banned in oh eternal Masters. yeah okay yeah yeah, yeah, um so they'll reprint these cards i'm sure but uh they're not gonna make new cards with these mechanics if i had to guess things like dredge i know um mark rosewater posted an article at one point basically saying placing a bunch of mechanics on a list from one to i believe it was 10 
Um, and one end of the list was saying, no, it's never going to happen again. And the other was like, yeah, it's like haste and stuff. Like, of course, it's going to be printed again. Okay. Um, Dredge and Storm, I know for a fact, were at the uh, the bottom of the list, never well, to be reprinted again. Storm should have Or never be. to be made again. Um, yeah, Storm broke the format in a way. It broke magic, dude. Dredge broke the format in a way. Um, and uh, things like for Cascade. A while. Uh, Jund really loved Cascade in Modern. Oh, heck yeah. Uh, Bloodbraid Elf just was insane in Jund. I mean, it is um, a playset in every single Jund deck. Absolutely. There was no reason not to, but nope. um, obviously it's banning. I did a number on Jund, but Jund is actually oh. doing really well. Reed Duke in the SCG Open mm. in Baltimore like a week or two ago, maybe. Um, <laughs> again, whenever that was. Whenever that was. Um <laughs> Uh, he did really well with it. Um, at one point, I don't know what his final score was, but I know I saw like eleven and two uh, before the finals. So he did a great job. Well, Jund is awesome. So and Reed is awesome. Reed's a great guy. Good how would Lord. you how would you describe him, Kev? Just an awesome person who likes people. <laughs> is that how you get that? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, that, that's it. That's, that's, yeah, that's a good way to say it. it. That's a good way to say it. Um, all right, guys. So. <sighs> With the deck techs out of the way for Vintage, next week will be Legacy. We go into our final segment, sponsored by Grand Slam uh, Cards and Collectibles. Uh, they do a lot of stuff with Magic, with Pokemon especially right now. Yeah. Uh, they also have Yu-Gi-Oh! and comics there. Um, they're doing some more. They're making some steps into Magic, and so we're hoping to get some some feedback from them on what they want to do and maybe help them out a little bit in getting totally. things set up. Um, Clamp over there is a really good guy. He's been very Definitely. nice in providing us with some packs for this. So we appreciate it. Uh, yeah, and big thank you. Big thank you. Yeah, but huge, huge. We encourage you guys to check out the description. Uh, their website as well as their Facebook is linked down there. Um, just in the Rock Hill, South Carolina area. If you're in Charlotte, North Carolina, it's like 10 minutes down the road. Yeah, it's really close. Yeah. You can come down and, and walk the same paths we do. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't that be neat? Wouldn't that be amazing? Uh, um, but no. you might you, you might run into us there. Yeah. We're, we're, I spend a lot of time there. That's um, true. I used to help out there a lot. So he uh, he's, yeah, go go hang out. Go hang out at Grand Slam. They're you great people. It's a great place to be. Um, oh, please. But again, our crack a pack series sponsored by Grand Slam. We are still on the hunt for our gold cards. I'm still looking for Gideon of the Trials. Where are they at? That combat celebration. Yeah, we got we got a long way to go yeah. potentially for these. Um, um, I'm hoping to get mine today. Uh, I'm looking through my pack again. We're <sighs> trying to basically uh, go through these packs and maybe give you some insight as to what we would pick out of these packs in a limited environment. Um, so first things first. Looking at my rare, it is not what I wanted. Uh, it is nope. Dusk to Dawn, the uh, basically the two Wrath effects of of Amonkhet. Probably not my first pick in this pack. I also do have a Foil Bitterblade Warrior, also not my first pick. Mm -hmm. um, I've got stuff like Trial of Zeal, Gale Strike, Kefnet's Monument, and a few other commons that are not particularly noteworthy. Uh, Greater Sandworm being pretty good. But I think, honestly, my pick would be Trial of Zeal. Uh, yeah. It's just a great uncommon. It deals three damage to something, and it's potentially repeatable, which I like that quite a lot. Uh, so I think I'd probably pick that over the Dust to Dawn. Um, again, not a bad card, but just eh, not my favorite. Yeah, um, so I did not get my gold card either. We get a lot of these bicycle lands. We do. <laughs> <laughs> there are five, I guess. Uh, that's fair. <laughs> Uh, irrigated farmland is the one I got. It's okay. the white blue. You all know what it does. Blech. Um, <laughs> I got a foil time to reflect, which is a flavorful card. Yes. Uh, exile target creature that blocked or was blocked by a zombie this turn. Very cool. It is and a neat. very good build around card. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know that I'd first pick it, but oh, God, no. we'll see what uh, you, uh... The flavor text is sweet. Yeah. Is it? Occasionally, there are those who refuse to appreciate all that the God Pharaoh provides for us. Oh, dang, that is pretty good. And the art are these zombies shoving this dude in a coffin. <laughs> <laughs> it's an awesome card. Yeah. Um, but yeah, honestly, I'm looking at a very weak pack here. Um, yeah, it's not the best. Honestly, for me, it comes down to Magma Spray or Anointer Priest. Okay. Um, Anointer Priest is good. I only think you if take you Magma have, Spray. Like, yeah. 
only if you can play into embalm and yeah. getting creature tokens. If I'm in white tokens, it's fantastic. Yeah, but magma spray is just it's solid removal. Hits a bunch of stuff from Mom on Kit. Like I'm looking at my pack. There's only one creature in here that it doesn't touch. Uh, there are only four, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's. I mean, let's uh, let's also take a minute to, hmm. to oh, appreciate. Fl- fling is here too. <laughs> but if we I, have to respect the fling. If I don't have my bombs, though, I'm not gonna. Yeah. And what's more likely to wheel here? Yeah. Well, that's probably fair. those who serve. But. <laughs> Yeah, those who serve, not the greatest. Although it's got a big butt. Yeah, a huge booty. <laughs> it's a two four. <laughs> For three. All right, guys. Uh, thank you again to Grand Slam, and thank you to all of you for checking us out, listening to us, hopefully giving us some feedback. We ask you again, check out the Patreon and the Twitch page or any other social media. We've got Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, follow us on there. Get regular updates uh, on what we do and uh, the things that we post. Um, but I think with that, Guys, that's going to wrap it up. We're going to head out. My name's Kevin. My name's Will. And this has been It Resolves. <laughs>